everyone, welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on a classic wooden motor cruiser in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. I just couldn't resist stopping at this beautiful lookout on this beautiful sunny second day of spring on my commute up to um, Genoa to work on foam this week. This is Saanich Inlet and the top of Saanich and in fact just up through there past that mountain is Genoa Bay although we have to drive quite a circuitous route to get there. Anyway, I'm super excited about this week. Gonna get a lot done. To be fair, I'm not quite sure what exactly. I think there might be some work on the helm though, which I'm really excited about. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. As usual, I wanna put out a extra special thanks to my PayPal and Patreon supporters. It's you folks that make the show uh, happen at all. And uh, if you're a uh, recent new supporter, uh, hang around to the end of the show during the beer of the week where I can thank you properly. All right, let's get back on the road. And well, welcome back to the shed and welcome again, Lloyd. So glad to have you here for another week. Glad to be here, Pete. <laughs> We've only been here for about five minutes and he's already hard at work. What are you up to here, Lloyd? We're removing the old vent that was here over the kitchen, over the galley. And I'm going to place planks back in here to replace the three planks here, remove the hole and then recover it. So from below, it'll look like it never happened. It'll look like it never happened. Have you know what you need to do right after that? What? Do the other mess I made up there in the, the blower in, hole. In the <laughs> hole was, okay? We'll do that one next. Once you get good at this, we'll do that again. <laughs> Excellent. So tell us what you're finding. This looks like fiberglass. It's fiberglass. Yeah. I thought this, this was actually um, the, um, the old original, original can canvas. Yeah, exactly. But it's not. It's fiberglass. So fiberglass. maybe the whole thing's just... Right. Fiberglass. And it's not at all well it's bonded. Not, it's, not, so. it's only got a little bit of glue in here. Right. I mean, it's not even not even solid bonding at all. Right. So exactly. Well, that's good news, good, actually. Good news to get it over. It means that when... It comes I, off easier. Exactly. <laughs> when the time comes to redo it properly, yeah. it'll be uh, yeah. it'll be nice yeah. and easy. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, man. That's that's something that I that I was not looking forward to having well, any to do with. Well, we'll get both of these done. <laughs> Excellent. Cheers. Thank you. For me, well, for me, ah... Uh, I just cleaned up because you know it's easy to know what you're doing when you clean up. I opened the curtain down here because we have a beautiful spring day. It's just absolutely lovely. But what exactly I'm going to do, I'm not quite certain yet because there's just such a wide variety to choose from. Okay, this may seem a little out of sequence, but all will become apparent in a second. If you've been watching along, you'll notice, you'll remember that the backrests of the dinette are about two inches too tall. This is the foam of the backrest of the dinette, and I'm going to actually cut two inches off it now. And instead of putting in the table saw this time, I'm just going to use the circular saw. You see how fuzzy it is? I already did one. Well, of course I was going to test it before I showed you all. Anyway, it worked pretty well. You find a lot of rod in there, or how does it feel? No, it's not bad. The wood's pretty good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do today is build the helm. But the helm is closely integrated into the end of the bench, and more importantly, the armrest on the end of the bench. So, ha, first I got to design and at least build one of the armrests, this one, so that I can sort of see what I'm working up against to build the helm, because of course, it has to be beautiful. Now, that's why I had to cut this down so I have the full geometry of what's going to go on here. So, there's an armrest here. And if you watch the 3D interior of Poem some time ago, you'll have seen it's like a um, mission style Morris chair type curved affair with a lot of vertical posts in here. Well, getting the geometry of it is much more important than the look, believe it or not. So, enter the handy dandy Travels with Jordy copyright mock adjustable handrail. So what I've done is put a couple of screws in here that have put it at the height that I believe is appropriate. You'll notice a slight slope here. I'm going to slide it all the way to the back and this is roughly where the armrest is going to be. But the reason I have to mock it up is a couple of reasons. One, I want it to match the bottom of this curve here because the armrest on this side of the bench is going to be attached underneath there and 
I want it to be appropriate both for dining mode and reclining mode because of course the bench drops a bit in uh, recline mode and I don't want the armrest to be way up in the air so I wanted to see what that felt like plus the last thing I really needed to do was find out how far forward the armrest went now the Morris style chair the armrests don't come as far forward as you might think because your arm isn't up there it ends about here it's sort of perfect and that's really important for getting in and out of the bench when the table's in place like so I need to be able to get past that with the table in place. So that works out really well. I played with various different geometry here and this is seems to be just about perfect. Let's switch to recline mode and see if the bench is still suitable. There we go. See how that feels. See, now it's still perfect. It's slightly higher, but somehow it sort of works. It feels more cozy, it's more like it's wrapping its little arms around me. I, I like that, excellent. Well, now this is now the mock-up of the geometry of the Morris style armrest. Now I just have to make a real one. All right, as I'm determined to mock everything up, I have mocked up the helm. Here we are, I have played with the height, I have played with the distance from the cabin side, I have played with the distance from the bench, and I am very happy with it right here. This feels great. It has a lovely relationship to the window. I can even sit in the window and steer happily. I'm, I'm just absolutely thrilled. And there's plenty of clearance through um, past the uh, past the galley here. How's it going there, mate? Going well. Getting ready to put some pieces in here. See what oh, 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 you're just about there. Oh, love the chamfer, mate. Look at that. Perfect chamfer. Of course, it's hard to see because the existing wood is such a mess here, but that is absolutely perfect. I love it. 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 Okay, you'll have seen me prepare three pieces of wood. Um, these pieces are going to be um, the end structure for all the little verticals for the Morris chair curved arm. Uh, these will be all the small little uh, verticals for the Morris chair arm. And these will be uh, spacers. So let me start to put it together and you'll see what I mean. And I've made enough for both sides of the bench, so I'm only actually using one half of all this stuff. The riser that's at the front and the back of the bench is going to sit down even further uh, because it's the structure. It's going to go down into that gap that you might remember seeing. And then the rest are simply going to go with these spacers all the way along and uh, give me a total of 13 inches. Now I didn't bother figuring out how far 13 inches was going to go. I'm just going to lay it out, mark it, and then cut this piece. Eight. I'll let that right like that. Now if my measurements are correct, out to inside, inside will be 13 inches while counting the next space. Good thing I added that. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to lay out all the individual spindles that go between the structural back spindle and the structural front spindle, but I don't want them sitting on the table because then they will be too far at the back. So I have cut this handy dandy piece of plywood, uh, quarter inch plywood, so now when I lay them down they are exactly centered in uh, my little arrangement here. So let's start putting this together. The spacer pieces are no concern. I'm just going to go over each piece I put in and make sure it's. Uh, I'm happy with the way it's eased because it's going to be much easier to tidy it up now than it is once it's installed. Excellent. And the final fill. 
smaller piece, tightens it right up. Beauty! it was very very tempting to put a daub of glue on the ends of all these uh, little spindles um, I don't believe there's any reason they're under no load there's no force I suppose if the screws which you're about to watch me put in the bottom were to ever loosen up the spindles could turn I will glue them at the top I believe but at the bottom if glue was to seep out anywhere along here it would be utterly miserable to clean it up well uh, before um, the finish went on there so I really really don't think I will okay this is super simple basically right up the middle of all of these we're gonna put a screw a nice long two inch screw which will make a great bite into that Okay, so now I'm going to take this inside and scribe the magic curve. All right, so if I slide the assembly down into the slot where it's going to be affixed, it's in position. Now I have to somehow get this curve. The curve I'm looking for is the same curve that's on the uh, forward bulkhead, which is the curve of the deck. Well, some of you will remember when I cut out that piece of plywood, I saved the offcut, um, mentioning that it was going to be part of the magic curve. Well, now all I need to do is place a magic piece of 12 inch uh, block on the other side so it rests in the same place on the other side. Get it here so that it's at 12 inches, which is right here, which is the underside of the handrail of the armrest and center it so this curve ladies and gentlemen is the curve of the handrail that's why do i keep saying handrail armrest that's going to rest up across here mm -hmm. easily traced and we're done with you there we go there, sit this on here and here, and we can just take the circular saw and zing that right off. I'm going to lower the blade just a bit, or raise it I suppose, in other words so it's not cutting quite so deeply. There we go. Actually, that turned out to be a pretty clean cut. I'm just going to sand it up a little bit and uh, get it perfect. Okay, so I need the actual armrest part now, and I want it to be three quarters of an inch thick. Now that's a bit of a sharp bend. I could steam it and pull it, but I'd rather the screws didn't have to hold all that. Plus, if I screw this way, I'll have to bung all those screws. So what I'm going to do is laminate two pieces of 3 8 mahogany which will easily bend to that and I will screw the lower level um, onto all the ends of all the um, the spindles and I will simply epoxy the upper level on clamp it sand it ferret it'll look just fabulous and I very much doubt anyone will ever see the seam plus laminations are cool Every time I cut into a piece of 3 8 mahogany, I just, oh, I feel woozy inside because 3 8 mahogany, as you know, all rough wood either comes in 2 inch or 1 inch. So to make 3 8 it's quite expensive because you're resawing it out of other planks. What I do is when I'm cutting, uh, when I need full 1 inch for certain things, which was in this case the uh, rear bulkhead for uh, MV Zephyrus last fall, um, I have it resawn. 
a two inch piece so that I get some three eighths out of the stock uh, before they redress it because the stuff is so valuable every little bit you don't want turning into shavings okay now I'm cutting these pieces a little extra long uh, because I'm going to need to be able to put a clamp on the ends of them to pull them in to bend them and there's an interesting phenomenon about when you bend something if you pull it right at the point where you want your curve to end it's going to be a little bit of a flat there you have to pull beyond where you're expecting your curve to end uh, so that it will actually still be curved at the point you expect it to be uh, you'll see more of what I'm talking about in a minute just making sure the vibration of the sanding didn't throw any of this out of alignment. What I'm going to do is raise this whole assembly up on three quarters of an inch. And the reason for that is because the armrest projects over the cushion towards the cushion by three quarters of an inch. It doesn't actually overlap the cushion, but it heads towards it in that direction. And a little more on this side because there'll be a little bracket. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so um, this is where I wish I had one more clamp because I could easily clamp these back and bend them, but then I would lose this tension and that's crucial. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start with a dry fit with just screws pulling this together because this is really quite easily flexed. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Um, yeah, famous last words. I don't know, 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 I don't know. Okay, so now I'll use my remaining clamp. Oh, piece of cake, absolute piece of cake. <laughs> What was I concerned about? I'm going to drill these two as well and um, take it apart again and get some glue in here. I'm just going to put the tiniest little daub of glue on each of these, um, hoping not to have to do any cleanup. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> this goes back on. Get that good and tight. And I am going to use the clamp to pull this in because it's longer than the screws themselves. It's a little more elegant. Very nice. Okay. Simply drill all the rest of these. I'm going to finish tightening these by hand because it's so crucial that it's just right. So really don't need this anymore. Well, I also don't need this any longer. And I suppose it's time we can knock all these out. I don't know how easy that's going to be. <laughs> Woohoo! How about that, folks? Now we just can put the second top on. Woohoo! Woohoo! Okay, so it's time to laminate the second piece on so we don't see all those screws. I was going to epoxy this, but it is such an easy flex. I'm just going to glue it with regular uh, tight bond three, which is an exceptional glue, and I happen to know it won't have any trouble at all. Nice and simple. I just have to get really, really uniform. And uh, my two clamps will pull that all together. Ah, fantastic. I've made um, these pieces extra long and a little bit extra wide, so this doesn't have to be a perfect uh, alignment. I've sanded this to get rid of any possible little divots from putting the screws in. And uh, let me get to work here. That's good enough for me. I 
everyone, good morning. Well, in the end, it may have been better to use epoxy after all because it's sort of better at joint filling. I had to use quite a few clamps, you can see on here, to keep this tight. And I think this one's okay, but again, I think probably epoxy would have been a little easier um, to do that. Anyway, let's pull all these off and sand it up and see how it looks. Let me, uh, let me get this cleaned up and we'll see how it really looks. Actually, it looks just fine to me. Woohoo! Bad. Okay, 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 okay. It goes right there. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love the little brackets. You know what we gotta do now? Oh yeah. Okay, this I have been waiting for. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. Well, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I've had to put <laughs> the bench back into bed mode and I'm really not gonna go to the trouble of turning it back into a bench just to view it. I know it'll be gorgeous. Really, really pleased with that. And um, now I just have to make another one, but actually I already have all the parts, so that'll go pretty quick. What I didn't get to this week was the helm. I thought about it a lot, um, but we've pretty much wrapped up this episode. The upside of that is it's only midweek, so I'm gonna carry on right away and make it. It'll be a bonus episode. Well, hello and welcome to the Travels of Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you this week from Lloyd's super cool, and now almost finished, Enzo. Enzo uh, Sprinter Travel Van Extraordinaire that he's already taken around North America once and once, 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 getting geared up for another one. Yep, yeah, heading, heading east pretty soon. Pretty soon. Let's have a beer and talk about Let's it. Let's have a beer. <laughs> okay, so this is another from, I can't read Wheelhouse it. Brewery. Wheelhouse Brewery, and, and uh, actually Alfie from last week gave us this. Uh, he said, why not just have more? So I'm very grateful. Thanks, Alfie. It's Flagship. Flagship. From... Prince Rupert. In Prince Rupert. Yep. All right. Yep. And you actually have glasses because you're a classy establishment. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't this isn't Boat Shed Beer of the Week here. <laughs> okay. Well, this uh, this is very promising. We've just finished... Well, this was good, too. It was very it was good. good we, it was good. Yeah. But I'm really looking forward to this beer because actually we've just had, well, two weeks, really, of, of work together in... Um, in, uh, in the shed working on poem and today or this week anyway was really good for me um, I I think I had you stripping more varnish today than maybe you might have wanted to <laughs> but of course I'm awfully grateful for that but uh, Lloyd's also done quite a few interesting things which either you've already seen or you'll see in the next episode, oh, next episode. yeah exactly yeah, so. um, some really fun stuff all right cheers um, flagship Thanks, yeah. from um, Wheelhouse Brewery. Wheelhouse Brewery. <laughs> Prince Rupert. And Prince Rupert. BC. Cheers. Thanks, Alfie. Thanks, Alfie. That's just fine by me. Well, that's good. That's, that's nice. pretty good. That's I like nice. that. Yeah, that's nice beer. All right. Yeah. We've got you outside in the rain, uh, which means we're also getting rain all over Lloyd's fancy cabinetry. So we're going to wrap this up pretty quick. Last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt is Michelle Paper Chaser. Michelle, um, get a hold of me, and uh, we'll make sure you get your Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Cheers to you, Michelle. Cheers. I'd like to thank two new patrons that came aboard recently. Uh, Ryan uh, Salazar and Johan Lofgren. Lofgren, I looked it up, and I hope that's how it's pronounced. Cheers. Thank you ever so much, both of you, for coming aboard. I appreciate it. No doubt. It's really starting to rain. And a new supporter um, on PayPal, uh, George... 
Peach. And I'm so grateful to George because he actually gave me the phonetic spelling of his name, which isn't spelt Peach. Uh, thank you ever so much, George. And also thank you for coming aboard. Cheers. Oh my gosh. That it's is good, good and good just perfect for today. Perfect. Yep. Yep. So week. you've been here a couple of weeks? Yeah, sort of we a... came in last, early last week and yeah. we've had a uh, great time together. We've come, it's we been good. A, got a little work done. I got, yeah. I got all the... Uh, odds and ends stuff that you while you were doing the bigger stuff, and right? Yeah, and a stuff. couple little things in here, which um, yeah, I got a few things. The few coffee, things co the, the coffee maker now has a stand, maker. so it doesn't have to be keep being stored when I move. And exactly, leave it up all the time. Exactly, uh, and it's stuff it just better feels. Than first coffee in the morning. That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> in bed. Way. In I'm, bed. Uh, morning right. coffee in bed is I a learned ritual. that from you. Yeah. <laughs> ritual that I'm very very fond of. Anyway, uh, the van's looking great, and uh, I'm envious because it's just like get in and go. Yeah, you know, ready, it's ready. there's no butt blocks. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no bilge pumps. <laughs> it's just... When you're at the just taking a Mercedes, they can fix <laughs> that's it. right. They can fix it up for you. Anyway, it's a lovely van and it, it's a super experience. We've actually just turned off the fancy furnace because with the door wide open, there wasn't much reason to have it on. But it also is quite cozy in here, or will be when we turn it back on. Anyway, um. Thanks so much for your help here. It's been really, really great to see you. Uh, we'll probably connect a little bit before you go, yep. but uh, otherwise, uh, been, have a, a fantastic time. trip yeah. for around North America yeah. again, and we'll see you next summer. See you next summer. If not before. Yeah. Can I put you on the spot for a word of the week? Well, since I spent all day today scraping varnish, <laughs> let's call it varnish. <laughs> I mean, I mean, for a boating show, that would be pretty That's easy. That's just about the that thing. Eh? Pretty easy to Well, there you there. go. The word of the week is varnish. And if you'd like to win yourself a Travels with Jordy t-shirt, simply use the word varnish in a comment down below, and I'll pick it random over the next week or so less, because there's going to be a bonus episode of comments. And if I pick you, you've won yourself a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. See you, I believe, on Wednesday. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Lloyd. Cheers. Thanks, Alfie.